Hey everyone, and welcome to this video. I'm Glenn, and this is episode 12 of the Oswan painting series. In this episode, I'm painting the horrors. If you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe and hit the like button. It only takes a few seconds and helps me please the algorithm to reach more viewers. Thanks for the support. As usual, let's see how I painted these horrors. Let's begin. First I remove all the mold lines by using a hobby knife. Then I use a mixture of glue and added plastic sprue to fill in any visible gaps on the models. These can be found around the shoulders, the hip joints and also the neck. I also use a pure glue to smooth out the mixture. This works great filling out the gaps. The pure glue can also be used to smooth out areas where the mold lines were removed. Next, I wash and clean the models in soapy water, then rinse them in clean water and let them dry. Then I prime the models white using an airbrush. This can also be applied by using a can of white primer. Now we all set and ready to paint. I prepare periwinkle purple on the palette, which is used as a base coat on the models, including a few other colors. Moonlight coral and blood red is applied to the bone areas, mixing them on the models. I leave out the larger spikes on the back. On the arms I follow a similar approach, applying the various tones of colors randomly, but with a focus on adding a reddish purple tone to the bone blades. The same applies for the chest and toes. I use hardened leather on the spikes on the back, and now the base coat is done. Now I begin to layer and highlight the models, starting with periwinkle purple mixed with white. I apply multiple layers gradually using lighter tones on the models as I work the layers and highlights towards the most exposed and raised areas. For the lightest areas, like on the head, I use an almost white color. For the muscles on the shoulders and arms, I use thin brush strokes. This will create a look of muscle fiber along these parts of the models, which looks great. I 
I proceed along the arms, layering and highlighting the larger scales while ignoring the smaller ones that resemble tiny dots. Next, I move on to the chest and stomach. Followed by the back. And finally, the legs. The legs feature numerous veins, which I will revisit in a later stage to define them further and make them stand out. For the smaller scales on the arms, I use a mix of blood red, moonlit coral and white. This is applied by dry brush. Before dry brushing, I make sure the brush is not completely dry. Before I dip the brush in paint, I moist the brush in water, wipe it off on a cloth until it's almost dry. I use a dedicated dry brush from the Army Painter. This works great. Now I gently dry brush the surfaces with the smaller scales. I use a bit of moonlit coral to make a nice transition from blue tone to red tone. and also a small amount of periwinkle purple. For the next few steps I add more white into the mix used previously and apply this in the same manner on the arms. I don't apply this to the less exposed areas like under the arms, since I imagine the light source from above.
I also apply a touch of periwinkle purple mixed with white to the scales as the final highlight. I proceed to the bone parts, starting with steel lead and wrap. I don't apply opaque layers, I retain some of the redis on the painting for a more organic look across all the bone elements. I also cover the parts around the waist and hip joints. Then the areas around the hocks. The toes. The spine. and the larger bone spikes. I retain some of the reddish undertone along their length. This tone is also kept in the less exposed areas on these spikes. I pick out some of the spiky bits on the arms and paint them as bones. Don't forget the small bones on the shoulders and neck. I apply a small amount of blood red in the entire mouth. And use steel leading drape on the teeth. Now I use a light mix of periwinkle purple and white to refine and blend skin and bones together. It is applied on the chest as a thin layer in between the skin and bone colors. I follow up with Moonlake Coral and Blood Red again to add some more red tones on these areas where I blended skin and bones together on the chest. I continue on with the red tones and apply a thin layer on all the bone parts, starting with the waist. 
den der tåges. The bone bits on the arms. The hooks. The neck and shoulders. And also the larger spikes. The model looks something like this at this stage. Next I continue with a new bone color, this time steel leading drab mixed with bone white. This is applied to layer and highlight all the bone elements. Right here you can see I apply a layer across the shape, still keeping some of the red tone along the shape. This pattern is randomly applied, creating a more interesting appearance. The next layer on all the bone elements is pure bone white. I move the layer further towards the edges and the most exposed areas. It's just a small amount touching the edges. On the spikes I just narrow down the layer following the shapes and the pattern I created. Now I repeat the process with Ulfron Grey, focusing on the very edges and narrowing down the highlights on the exposed areas.
At this stage, the models look something like this. Let's paint some more bones. Let's move on to the church rivers. I use the same process as I used on the other bone elements, starting with steel lead and drab. I apply a layer on most of the blade, but retain some of the red and purple tones. I create the pattern similar to the pattern on the spikes, applying a layer across the blade in a random manner. The next layer is steely and drab mixed with bone white, moving the layer more towards the edges and narrowing down the pattern. Now I use bone white to amp up those highlights and refine and narrow down the pattern even more. And lastly, with Ulf and Grey as the final highlight.
With the blades done, they look something like this. I think they have a very interesting appearance using this process. And let's not forget the lipstick. To define the veins, I use Moonlake Coral and apply this on top or along the veins on the models. Afterwards, I use a light mix of periwinkle purple and white and highlight the veins. I use pure white to paint the eyes. If needed, you can refine the eyes using the tones of periwinkle purple and white. I paint the bases as I have done in my previous videos, slapping on some speed paints and blending them on the bases. Then I highlight the bases using tones of yellow, green and brown on the roots and ground. And for the stones, I use different tones of grey. I also painted some details using tones of purple, blue and yellow, adding small dots as fungus or mushrooms. I paint the arrow on the base with corn red. and go the two laps around the base rim with a black color. Then I gave the models a few coats of matte varnish for a matte finish and to protect the paints. However, for some reason the bases ended up with a quite dusty appearance. I'm not sure what happened, so to correct this I applied a thin coat of matte varnish by brush. Now the base looks much better. I decided to add a bit of saliva onto the teeth on all the models. With Yuhu glue, I carefully drag strands between the teeth. It's a bit tricky and requires patience and practice. I apply the glue almost directly from the tube by using a pointy tool. I follow up with gloss varnish on the teeth to enhance the effect of saliva. I also decided to add some strands onto and around the purple thing, making it a bit more alive. And with that, let's have a look at the final result.
cursed creature stand at our gates, and the Painting Chronicles Brotherhood stands at the ready to face this evil. Join our cause by subscribing, and we shall triumph together. Pillar and Path Brothers. Also like and comment.